Yo, hello everyone. Yeah, is Olumide Omutayo Samuel again. Always getting motivated <laughs> with the fact that I have you all there listening to me. Uh, we all understand that Rome wasn't built in one day. Uh, and of course, the Great Wall of China started with a single block hidden somewhere. <laughs> wow. So the same way, with persistent good thinking and timing, well, we create our own glass house, our own opportunities. Honestly, I am of the belief that a man who is able to see opportunities is great, no doubt. And um, a man who is able to see opportunities and understand how to grab them is greater, no doubt again. However, a man who is able to create his own opportunities is the greatest. <laughs> is the greatest. So, people say opportunity comes once. Nah. No, I don't believe that. That is for free-minded people. Great minds great mind decide when the opportunities come and when they stay put. It's as, it's as simple as that. You just have to read in between the lines and to know exactly what you are doing. So creating or managing opportunities is what um, true business spirit is all about. And on this note, we are going to hang our talk today. Um, yeah. We are entering into the world of business, <laughs> seeing how we can break business and opportunities to pieces. Yeah. Once again, I'm Olivia Omtaya Samuel, and I'm here to talk on the topic, business first course. Business first course. With a tag on how not to run an unsuccessful business. How not to run an unsuccessful business. So business first course is today's talk about. So um, as usual, simplicity is my language and I we know ever continue to appreciate those that uh, sent me mails, phone calls, you know, continue our discourse on social media. You are all special, 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 super special people. Um, you, you've made my dreams come true, giving me the impetus to do more. Thank you so much once again. Uh, you are very free to, to call you know, this lecture, this uh, talk we are going to have today, uh, the common sense of business. It's just as simple as that, you know, business first course or the common sense of business. It's just like that. So, in fact, that will be my my joy and expectation as well. So, uh, people today venture into business under the cloud of uncertainty and the drive to follow blindly the crowd. Now, listen, no one is saying trend management is bad or counteractive. No. In fact, it is the starting point in understanding a true business. But following the crowd because they are trendy is as bad as throwing a chocolate to the devil. You don't want to, to pick it up again, you know, would you? You don't want to do that. <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that at all. So everything about lives somewhere here or if there's any other, you know, beyond as people, you know, believe, some people believe anyway, um, it's subsumed, you know. Uh, other side is some, um, uh, especially subsumed business in one business or the other. So, which means understanding business, you know, understanding business and the cogwheel how it works is same as understanding life, because life is everywhere. So, everybody wants to make money. Be popular, be comfortable, and live a life much enviable to others. But the question is, uh, is it everybody that is ready to do business? Is it everybody that is ready to cultivate and grow that tenacious spirit on which the uh, uh, true business are built? Today's lecture will be subsumed under various areas of what a true business really is, the relevance of success, successful business, and um, uh, businessmen in the society, their relevance. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So, uh, benefits of a successful um, business with the aim to motivate us. Realistic way to build, you understand, a successful business. What could disturb, truncate, I mean, destroy a, a true business spirit? That is, if it's indeed it's true, anyway. Uh, question we should tackle before venturing into business and a whole lot of other cardinal issues will be discussed today. So, we must understand that um, a gorilla, we all know what a gorilla is, the animal gorilla. A gorilla fights another gorilla, not a monkey. 
So you don't see a gorilla going about fighting monkey. No, it will look for a gorilla its size and you know want to venture into a uh, competition of strength. Which means uh, we must know and understand where to pitch our tents, fight our own competitions. Business is all about the struggle, you know. It is all about the fight. Until we are successful, we must learn to read through our success and also understand that even within the world unsuccessful, within the world what? Unsuccessful, there is still the word success hidden within it. So remember, like I said earlier, Rome wasn't built in one day. So through sustaining, um, highly through sustaining highly conceptual um, businesses are not expected to be built in one day as well. So we hope that to uh, continue to persevere and all of that. So I'm still here. Samuel, still with you. Love you so much. Uh, you can always get to me. You can always get across to me in the same way you've been doing all this while. Uh, on my Twitter handle, that is Twitter at uh, twitter.com at um, S S O L O M O O N. That is Twitter at Solomon. And of course, my Google Plus page is still there. My, uh, my uh, Facebook uh, page is still there. I'm Tyler Samuel. And of course, on um, my mobile number. My mobile number is, I'm always with it, no doubt, uh, is 090-33-7572 and 36. 090-33-7572 and 36. Of course, the code is um, Nigeria, uh, plus sign uh, 234, plus 23 and 4. So, uh, yeah, so, and of course, I have, as an artist, I'm an artist, you know, I always say this, I always emphasize, I always ingrain this. Uh, I have my um, uh, shop on redbubbles.com and all of that, seller.co is all there, and I have my Instagram pages as well. So, uh, my, um, so, anyway, those are just basically for now. So, let's relax to see how far we can deal with um, that marauding concept we call business. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to start off my talk today with a story. If you've been listening to me for a while, you know I love telling stories. I love um, backing up my um, analysis, my talk, uh, my belief with um, a level of stories. So um, now the story I'm going to use in backing of our today talk, which of course, like I said earlier on, business first Cost business first cost how not to run an unsuccessful business now far off in the olden days in the olden ancient time two farmer friends were cultivating on a large area of land each on his own acre busy tilling the land in the hot sun while they were still engrossed in their works a thief quietly climbed into the third farmer's farm stealing his produce now the third farmer wasn't around so the thief stole virtually all his previous day harvest without anyone seeing him so to say not even not even the other two friends so but however at the end of the day when the third friend arrived he became furious started accusing his other two friends and of course the matter got to the king's palace was accusing him, how can you guys be here? I have been boggled, I have been robbed. Oh, the first farmer said he had been so busy. That's the first farmer now, you know, two friends cultivating the land. So the first one said he had been so busy and engrossed in his work that he didn't even notice anything. He's doing his work, didn't notice anything. So however, the entire, the entire people that were, you know, the, uh, uh, um, that were at the king palace were shocked. All of them were shocked. When they asked the second farmer if he had noticed anything, and he said, uh, he not only noticed um, the thief or whatever happened, he, it's not that he just noticed it, but he saw the thief glaringly. He saw everything from A to Z and could even name, and he could even name the items that were carted away. So uh, he, he could name those items the thief stole one after the other. And, you know, in the space of time, they, they were being offloaded of the third farmer's burn before sneaking away you know, all of what he packed in a, in, a, in a kind of a cart that he brought with him. 
And in fact, he can even tell that he knows, he can even describe the footpath the he took to, I mean, escape from the third farmer's um, farm. The entire people in the court, the court was silent, no doubt. And um, the, the king was deep in thought. Then the entire people were like, what is going on here? Then one of them said, then you second, you the second farmer, you are an accomplice of the thief. If not, you would have alerted the first farmer and together you two of you would have stopped him. You would have, you would have, you would have like, you know, you, you would have done something about that. You would have apprehended the thief. The second farmer refuted and he refuted and said, no, I'm not an accomplice and I'm not to blame for that. And there was a slight argument between them, you know, some of the people in the... the however, the, the, the king was silent and was thinking about this thing, you know, was thinking. Then he spoke after a long thought. He said, you first farmer, he asked them the question, starting with the first farmer. I said, hello, mister, you first farmer, how many ridges did you make that... Um, this um um today i mean of course it's happened that very day how many ridges did you make today the first farmer responded ah, sir it's 200 ridges your majesty and there's a 200 ridges okay uh, okay that's not that's not bad that's okay the king asked the second farmer the same question and he also said 200 ridges so as a wise man he is that is the king now he continued if you so much see the thief why didn't you apprehend him? He was asking the second farmer now. You know, unlike the other people, they were shouting, you know, going into a kind of, you know, here and there, uh, um, blame flying in and there, a lot of that. The king wasn't like that. He's like, okay, now, if indeed you have seen all of this, what the thief, you know, did and all of that, and the way he carted everything away. So, uh, why didn't you apprehend, uh, apprehend him anyway? So um, the second farmer said, Your Highness, that if I if I that act alone, that act of making the noise and trying to apprehend him, would have disrupted my job and target of making two hundred ridges in that very moment. This to very today, you would have stopped me. I won't be able to do my job. Then the king asks. The king asks again. Are you not a friend of the third farmer? The man answered, Of course, sir. I am his friend. And I'm ready to assist him because I can recognize the thief and I can take anybody, take you and anybody straight to where he is. However, the chiefs and other people in the court continue to like accuse him sort of for being a wicked, insensitive man. But the king said authoritatively afterward, Quiet, every one of you. Quiet. This second farmer is a better man. All of them were like, uh, Sir, your majesty, we don't understand. Everybody was shocked. They, said, they were like, how? He's like, but he, sir, he never did anything to stop the thief. He said, he only stood and watched his friend being robbed, claiming that he cannot stop his own job. He said, yes, the king continued. Yes, he's a better man. Because why? In this village, we want, you know, there's, the, the, the saying that an idle hand is the devil's workshop. He lost his job. This second farmer lost his job to the extent that even a thief's activity cannot deter him from doing it. And because of his careful observation, because of his careful observa observation, we are not just stopping the thief, but stopping stealing in the land. And in one burst of anger and authority is he stood now, since you can recognize the bad egg in our midst in this, in this village, it is now our turn to finish the job, the good job you have started. Let's go and what? Apprehend the thief. <laughs> wow, that is it. That is the story. Now to the moral of the story. To the moral of the story. Number one, from this story, what are we able to get out of it? Number one is this. You have to love your, you know, remember we're talking about business, right? We have to relate it to business. Now, number one thing, you have to love your business so much that nothing deter you from it. Whatever business you've chosen to do, whatever service you've chosen, you've decided to render, you must love your business so much that nothing will deter you, distract you 
from doing it. Because you soon not succeed. You will succeed in what you love doing than what you don't love doing. So have a business you love so much. Number two, moral. Number two is this. Be conscious of your environment. Be conscious of your environment. No matter how you get involved in your business, no matter how you love your business so much, be conscious of your environment. Know what is happening around you. Be up to date and proactive because business, like people, could become sickly, needing a fresh injection of newness. That's why we're talking about trendy. You understand? That's why you must talk about what is trendy. What exactly is 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 in the polity? What exactly is is around that can boost my business? That can give me that impetus? That can give me that popularity beyond above my competitor, my competitor or my competition? Number three, number three is this: be ready to help. That's one good thing. Be ready to help. Who knows? You might be on the receiving hand some other day. And remember, he who teaches others to succeed, he who teaches others to succeed, teaches him or herself to master the art of success, to master, to, to master the, the art and even science of what success. So those are the three wonderful lessons that we can bring out of that story. Now, what is business? Interestingly, if you ask people this question, you're bound to get answers from all walks of life. You will have some that are quite conceptual, like um, nothing short of the four walls of a university, and still you will get some answers that are nothing less of, you know, too simple, if you, if you know what I mean. But the most interesting point is that all of them will be making one point or the other, depending on the areas you've chosen to see it. Now, business is everywhere. Everyone has got a business, one way or another, or one, one way or the other. And in this light, we can simply define business as the art and act of providing for or filling a certain life need in exchange for something. Business is basically defined as the art and act of providing for or feeling a certain life need in exchange for something. I don't know what that thing is. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's for whatever it is. Maybe for a kind of service or whatever. But in exchange for what? Something. Now, however, our perception in this lecture will be about the business that you know, generally helps you to you know, pay bills, uh, keep a certain life standard, retain your no humanly pride and self-esteem. In short, keep body and soul together. So, in other words, the kind of business from where you earn money and other means of livelihood. Although, on the larger sense, people have different reasons for going into business anyway. And um, this reason must be well respected as well. So, as simple as it is, um, if we engage the process of um certain products or service or services to earn and sustain ourselves, we will say we are in business. But then, how do we qualify our business? How do we know we are succeeding? There are a few other expectations of a successful business. These things we, I mean, this thing we ordinarily see to say um, we are truly uh, in business and uh, succeeding. You know, the, the, all these things that we see and say, okay, we are in business and, of course, we are progressing. They are very, very simple. One, I'm going to highlight like or maybe like 10 of them. One, if you are talking about a business now, it should fulfill every home and societal need. It should fulfill every home and societal need of the business owner, basically, at least for a start. Number two, it should fulfill the need for spiritual, mental, and physical freedom. It should fulfill that need for your own spiritual need, I mean spiritual freedom, mental freedom, and physical freedom. You must be free in these three wonderful areas. Then number three, it should take away burden. 
If you say this is a business and you're succeeding and you're enjoying it, it should take away boredom. That's why I said earlier, you should do what you love doing, not just what you see people doing. Number four, it should set a standard for day-to-day -day routine or as the time it may be. It should, be, it should, it should set a standard for your I mean, day-to-day -day schedule that, okay, this is what I do and this is my timing for what I do to earn my living. Number five, in a larger sense, it becomes part of a nation's microeconomic stability, contributing to the economy in one way or another. That's things that can say, okay, this is a business and this is a business that is succeeding. So it, it, should, it should serve as an aspect of the microeconomy that stabilizes and contributes to the economy of the country or of whatever society we find ourselves. Number six, it should serve as pride to the owner. It should serve as pride to you. Whatever business you are doing and you are not even proud to, 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 to showcase it, then there's a problem somewhere. Number seven, it should be seen as part of common tradition, maintaining a way of life. In some countries, the first day of the week is, um, is even mystified, if you understand my point here. So, if you say this is a business and you are succeeding in it, it should, it, should, it, should, it should be seen as part of a tradition. It should be seen as part of a tradition. You know, just like um, when I was talking about setting a, a standard day-to-day -day, um, schedule or stand, uh, a routine or whatsoever, this it should, it, should, it should be a tradition. Maintaining a way of life. It should maintain a what? A way of life. It should be, it should be an extension of you. It should be an extension. You should be able to, if that is your business and it succeeds and you love it, you should be able to mystify it. You should be able to mystify it. You should be able to wallow in, in it. Then number eight, it should be an avenue to give back to the society. You should be able to help. You should be able to lift others up. If you are not able to lift others up in your business, I'm sorry, something is wrong. Something is wrong over there. It's wrong with it. Number nine, it should make the owner or even the employee, so to say, happy enough to continue doing it. It should make the owner or whoever is associated with it, the employee, even the customer that, you know, associated with the business, everybody should be, should be happy enough to continue with it. And then number 10, it should be accessible. It should be accessible. That is, in, 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 or to be contained in a larger network. That is talking about cooperative, the union, um, uh, or whatever. Which for that serve to protect and sustain it. So if you say, this is a business and it's succeeding. I'm not talking about maybe trying to foment trouble by creating a union, creating union and trying to you know, do this and all of that. It's just about... Um, fighting for your for your for what you want for what you desire for what you elevate you and a successful business should be in a network there should be network network is what is succeeding nowadays it makes things successful so there should be a network around it so aside this expectation that i've, I've highlighted this thing i've highlighted there are other facts to be considered and of course uh this fact depends on the nature of the business the environment is located uh the available funds uh, to run it and uh, finally the the experience um and capacity of its management so all of these things come to play you know we might not have touch those areas but they are very very key as well we should remember that it is not just um only one way that leads to rome it's not only one way that leads to rome a bicycle repairer feasibility study a bicycle repairer's feasibility study may not be the same with that of a food vendor and yet each has its own strong point when it when, when put into consideration when come to running a business so also when trying to pick a business for oneself there are a whole lot of um things to think about you know after all everyone wants a business um not too strenuous or capital intensive and you know yet lucrative in all ways and in, in this slide we will consider the relevance of business or running a business to the owner and by extension the society he or she find himself or herself so we have to we are going to look about look at, uh, uh, around all of these 
um, a, 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 a facet of um, the topic we are considering today and, of course, basically about business. So, firstly, we should understand that having a business keep one out of trouble. Remember I said earlier on, um, uh, an ideal hand is a devil's workshop. So, it, it keeps you out of trouble. And having a successful business keeps one out of debt. You have a business, you're out of trouble, but you have a successful business, you're out of debt. So, although we can't dismiss the fact that, um, uh, strangely, uh, one of the qualities of a successful business is the ability to be able to secure loans, you know, I mean, so to say, you, be able, you, have, you know, you, you see, I know some people may want to take me up on this, that, okay, if you, if a business is actually successful, should you now start sourcing for loan all over the place? No, 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 I'm not talking about. When I say your business should be successful enough to have the ability to be able to secure loan, it means it's, 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 it has, it's, it has this, this, uh, this, um, uh, how would I call it now? It, it's strong enough that if as the owner, you want to see, you want to seek for loan, you, 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 you have every, there's every reason for you to, to secure the, the loan. That's just what I'm saying. You might want to go to you might want to you might want to venture into seeking for loan or you know expanding in what, what way that you see fit. But the bottom line is that you have a business that is strong enough that if you intend to go for I mean seeking for loan, you are good to go. That's just what I'm saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, but um, a successful business to some extent can seek for loan for sake of expansion. You know. Uh, uh, you know, instead of whatever, whatever, and of course, there is what you call um, what do you call it now, the um, the capital, whatever that you know, you seek for uh, capital, you know, you sell shares, you sell shares, ownership shares of the company, and all of that. So there are so many ways you want to seek it. your your, I mean, your uh, business and passion funds and all of that. So when a business be- be- becomes troubled, the first impulse of its uh is uh, of his um owner is either to sell it or close it down i think that is ba- that is almost basic in as much as um um many uh qualities expected to strengthen the business um the same way there are so many defects so there are so many as well as there's so many quality to certain it there are so many defects to pull it down you know there are so many that could try and t- that could turn it into a troubled one but then in an excessively uh capitalist society like the one mostly we run or, or here and there where the big fishes easily swallow the um, the smaller ones the economy to some extent may be one-sided people become afraid starting a business they rather want to um remain in the position of employee while those who have um already started one are afraid to to stick out their neck for sake of expansion, you know, if you know what I mean. To uh, an, uh, a larger essence, uh, some some businesses serve as uh, resources for other ones, I mean, for probably other bigger ones to, to grow in a certain way. So it, it always still conform to the fact of uh, big fishes um, swallowing the smaller ones, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah. So, um, however, the, the, the truth in any economy is, that, is this. When... Um, small businesses grow. That, that's just the truth. When small businesses grow, the economy becomes liberalized and, um, of course, also grow. So, in short, what I'm saying is simple. We should go into business because when the economy is filled with various businesses, of course, particularly talking about successful ones, successful smaller ones, the economy grows. Okay, now, taking this literally, I ordinarily would spend let's say, um, uh, 50 naira on a pack of sugar. Now, 50 naira, naira is the currency I use in my home country in Nigeria. So I'm going to use that for sample now. It doesn't mean that in dollars, in euro, in, in pounds, or in, 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 in yen or whatever, that I'm just using this as um, a kind of uh, example. So I ordinarily we spend 50 naira on a pack of sugar. Now, due to unavailability of funds, infrastructure, or the fear of having to swim in troubled waters uh, for starting or whatever, we all choose um, we all choose to become employees. Big businesses and probably multinational 
um, wants uh, 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 in charge of production of sugar because it is the only um, it, it is only them that can afford it, you know, in a way because they have all the resources. And within the space of six months, I found out I'm buying a pack of sugar for 80 naira. I don't know if you get it. I just want it to be with me. Normally, I would buy a pack of sugar for 50 naira, but because we don't have any small business going into production of sugar, even at the minimal level, but I'm buying it eventually at 80 naira. Now, the claim of this multinational and uh, or a big, super big um, industry is that uh, we import everything. We do this, we seek raw materials, we do that, we do all of that. Um, it's okay, but at the same time, I've been to some extent being just changed. I'm looking at 15 era, but at the end of the day, I'm coughing out 18 era difference of additional 13 error but in another situation when we are when we are involved in the economy i may choose not to buy the big company's brand of sugar where there are all other factors of production plays functioning well and being adequately maintained and in the space of six months i, rea I realize that um, not only do i have option of brands availability of product and a satisfactory customer relation i'm also buying a pack of sugar within the range of 35 naira 28 naira um even 20 naira and funny enough in some places i only need to buy a smaller measure of say 12 naira to add to the free samples i get in a promotion and come back to having my initial value of 15 naira pack of sugar for even less so at, at that point, we, the multinational or the super um, large uh, industries, they may want to churn out this sugar in, I mean, in bigger packs. Then for the sake of the small businesses, we, we have so, those that will buy it and maybe, you know, buy the granulated one, I mean, the, 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 the grinded one, so to say, and pack it in, you know, small uh, polythene sacks and start selling it at a, at, a, at a cheaper and at a smaller value for me to buy, for me to make use of. And of course, I may just buy that and, oh, you have free samples for me, blah, 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 and I'll go there, add it to it, and of course, I'm rolling. But the only thing that is challenging in this kind of society, because obviously it's a capitalist society we were, we were talking about right here, and the only challenging is there must be tenacious monitoring of pricing there must be there must be price control the government must be involved the people must be involved there must be price control there must be resources control there must be a, a production control there must be control in all areas of the um, operation of this sugar production within the economy it's as simple as that so once there's checks, once there, once there are balances, once once there are, there's control, once there's once there are regulations, then we all enjoy the economy. The bigger ones will not fry out the smaller ones for eating, and of course, the smaller one will be able to look the bigger ones in the face and say, "Wow, you succeed in this environment, in this economy, in this society. I'm also going to succeed." It's as simple as that. So in all facets, the economy is beneficial to all except the big and emotional to some extent that we no longer have the opportunity to claw my limited resources from the on, on um, from me. So trying to analyze how relevant having a business is to uh, is to an individual society at large is trying to analyze the economy itself. Secondly, when we talk about maintaining a business, or better still, uh, someone who is about starting one, it to Sorry, it will only be uh, far better when we stretch. That is when we stretch wider our net of analysis or feasibility study. It is not only government, government laws and policies on the economy, uh, the, the the politics of, of the land, the social infrastructure, the the role and rules of law uh, of the land that solely determine how our business will truly fly. Honestly, there are other factors like religion, social engagement, like um, uh, sports, festivals and ceremonies. How international 
um uh sorry how internationally involved our country is and of course how far we understand uh uh the world as presently you know a global village because the world is not a global village you remember i talked about network earlier on a network can come in different facets so all these are external factors different from the internal and personal ones which are based on our level of education experiences funds and knowledge of the business in question so all of these things, we are looking at the external factors, we are looking at the internal factors, we are looking at the f- personal factors. So people reside in the slum, rural, urban areas, mega cities and all of that. The question is, how do we uh, feature all this into our plan? Because sometimes the twig, the twig we refuse to take care of may come round to plug us unrepentantly in the face. So if we see something that is just being bundled out, out out there and we don't do something about it, you're like, okay, it doesn't concern me. I don't bloody care about what it is. It might come out to haunt us in the, in the long run. So it's better not to have anything left behind from the start when we're carrying out our feasibility studies, our planning, than to have everything to deal with at the end of the day. So life is intricate, no doubt. It is like a chain reaction that um, that kept you, um, that kept us wondering how relevant the sale of, um, um, you know, kept us, how relevant the sale of, say, um, a cola nut, a cola nut uh, to the operation of, um, let's say, like um, extra powerful, uh, gigantic machinery in the oil and gas industry. I say, okay, this is the sale of this is the sale of cola nut, a, a local produce, uh, in relation to you know multinational gas industry. But then the fact remains that important macro. Listen to me very very carefully here. That important macroeconomic policies are most times channeled from the microeconomics ones. I will say that again, that important macroeconomic policy, uh, policies are most time channel from the microeconomic ones within the state and vice versa. And even vice versa. So the same way the micro affect the, 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 the macro, the same way the macro affect the micro. So like I said earlier, it is all intricate, like a chain reaction. One eventually affects the other, and that's why we must thoroughly understand that the business of running a business is indeed a very serious business itself. Thank you.